And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Uwe Rosenberg's New York Zoo. Now, this is a game that, on one hand, I'm like, woo, I love zoos. Any game about a zoo is fine by me. I like going to zoos. I like seeing the animals. I live in Miami. We have a fantastic zoo down here. Uh, that's great. This is also a game for Uwe Rosenberg, who makes a lot of games I like, but this one has, yet again, polyominoes. These different tetra-shaped pieces, and you're filling up a board with them. This is not the first game Mr. Rosenberg has designed using these. And in fact, if I'm counting correctly, it is the sixth game that he's done with this. Alrighty, well, he even did a trilogy. Stronghold Games produced it, of placing these out, trying to fill up a spot as much as possible. This does that. Now, Capstone does some great stuff, great art, but how different is this one? Well, let's find out. Each player in this game is going to have their own board, and the boards are mostly the same, although they they have them set up so player order matters, and so if you go first, you might have a slightly bigger board than everyone else to fill up. Because to win a game of this, you need to fill every spot of your board in with tiles. And you're going to be placing various tiles of different shapes on the board, and the first person to completely fill them all up is the winner. But you're not going to just be placing them on the board. You're going to need to be filling many of these things with animals to do so. A long board is placed here where you're going to be putting different tiles randomly here on a pile. And it's kind of a track that this elephant is going to be moving around. And on a player's turn, they can move this elephant up to three spaces forward with a pile of tiles counting as a space. So this would be one, two, three. Now there's different spots that you can land on. Some spots are going to give you animals. And you can see, for example, if I go here, I'm going to get these two animals. If I go over here, I'll get these two animals, etc. If I land on a pile of tiles, I'm going to take that top tile and put it in my area. When putting a tile in your area, you place it wherever you'd like to, remembering that once it's placed, it's there, and then you must put an animal in it. Now, players are going to start with a couple animals based on turn order. And so let's say I build a tile here and I place this animal like this. If I put another tile out, I don't have another animal to place, so I'm going to need to get some more animals. When you get animals, let's say I get another flamingo, I could put it in one of these houses I have, or I could put it directly into the flamingo house here. And as I grow, I'm trying to fill these tiles completely with animals. But let's say in the future I did get another tile. And let's say I put the tile here. I have to put an animal in it. I can move an animal from another enclosure as long as I don't leave any of the enclosures on the board empty. So when I land here, for example, and take the flamingo and the kangaroo, I can either put those in houses or I can put them in tiles on the board. And whenever you move an animal onto a tile, you can move another animal from another spot too. Also, whenever you pass, whenever the elephant passes certain lines on the board, those animals are going to breed. So when I, the elephant goes from here to here, at the end of that turn, all flamingos are going to breed and each enclosure that has at least two penguins is going to, or two flamingos, sorry, is going to get another flamingo. This one wouldn't have one, but if I had these here, you can have, you can breed in up to two of your areas. So these two would each have one more. If there was three in each, they would still get one more. doesn't matter. As long as there's at least two, you'll add one more. Now, if you're putting these animals on the tiles, you're doing that because if you put the last one on a tile and you completely fill it up, you score that tile, you'll take off all the animals. If you have an empty spot in the house, you can keep one of them. The rest come off, and then you get to take one of these tiles over here, these attraction tiles. Now, you'll notice there's some big ones, but there's also quite a few of these one spots because as you are slowly building your area, you will find, oh, I see, there's a place I need to put one of these to fill up my whole thing. These, are, these don't need to be filled with animals, but they're ways to fill in the holes. So the game is going to have you fill these up with animals because, again, once you put the last animal on a spot, you get to keep one of them. The rest go away, but then you can add more spots to your board, filling it up more quickly. 
So that's basically the rules of the game. Like I said, you move the elephant and you take the tile or you take the animals that you land on. And when you pass different spots, different animals will breed. And you'll keep doing this as soon as one person completely fills up their board. That person is going to be the winner unless multiple people did at the same time. But that will unlikely happen. The game comes with this box here, which is a place to put all the different animals in. Um, I rather have them separate it myself, but they are really cool looking animals. I do find it fascinating that no one can ever remember what the animals are. Okay, so yes, we got kangaroos and penguins and flamingos, and the white ones are wolves or foxes or dogs, they're arctic foxes, and the other ones are meerkats or gophers, and no one ever, <laughs> it just seems like no one can ever remember what the animals are, but their shapes are distinct, their colors are distinct, they look cool. Um, the penguins have the white on one side, I wish they'd done it to both sides, but not a big deal. Uh, overall, I think they're very colorful. The the tiles themselves are also nice. The quality works. I like they have little, you know, fairground stuff on the other ones. It's it's pretty good quality. The board might be a little thinner than I would like, but I'm not complaining. The only thing I might complain about are the rules. I thought the rules took a game that's not that complex, really, rules-wise, and made it sound more difficult. Like the animal breeding and completing enclosure, they have like a two pages on that, and I felt like that could have been written more succinctly. I, I had to read it multiple times before I was not, I still wasn't 100% sure that I was getting it absolutely correct, but once you get going, you're like, oh, it's not that difficult at all. You know, I have to say, of all of Uwe Rosenberg's normal polyomino style games, not counting the big ones like Feast for Odin, but of the normal ones, uh, Indian Summer and blah, 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 Cottage Garden, Patchwork, this is my favorite of them. I really enjoyed this game, but I'll tell you what, it is crunchier than you might think. It is all about efficiency. And so this game is, first of all, you want to land on big shapes because a big shape will help fill your area pretty fast. However, a small shape is easier to fill up with animals. You can fill it up faster and get those bonus shapes. When grabbing the bonus shapes, you want the biggest bonus shapes, but maybe you want the smallest ones because they fit into the cracks and crevices a little easier. This is a race game to fill up as quickly as you can. And it's funny because it uses things we've seen in Rosenberg games before. He loves the breed of animals. He loves being the first to fill up an area with polyominoes. And then there's this moving around a track. And I sat there and thought, what is unique about this game? This game has a lot of mechanisms I've seen before, but the combination works really well. You're, you can do a little bit of planning in the game as you try to figure out, okay, the breeding for penguins happens here. The breeding for mercats happens here. This is what I have. What animals should I take next? You only, the analysis process isn't going to be too long because you only have a few spaces to pick from. So you, do you want animals or do you want tiles? You can always pick either. And you have to sit there and think, how far do I want to move? If I move here, I might be setting someone else up to do that. And at the beginning, like I said, you're describing big tiles, putting animals out. It feels good as you see them breed and grow. But at the end, it becomes this race. And suddenly you realize you have four spots where singles, you know, spaces. And you need to fill those up, which means you need to breed animals as quickly as you possibly can. And I found myself really getting into just how interesting and crunchy. I don't know that it's a super strong themed game. Like, why are you clearing out animals? I don't get that part. But the animals do look good. And it feels different enough. It does feel, in a sense, the fourth in that series that he's already done. Cottage Garden and Indian Summer and Spring Meadow. This does feel like a fourth there, but this feels both fairly easy to teach, but the heaviest of those. I think gamers who are looking for a more in-depth experience will probably enjoy this one more. I liked it a lot. The theme and pieces didn't help. Capstone always does a fantastic job with those, but uh, I guess he hasn't yet drained the polyomino swamp dry yet. There's still stuff to be found, and I'm glad that I found some interesting things in this game. I'm Tom Vassell. We'll see you next time on the Dice Tower. Dice Tower Judgment approved.